Hi there. Today we're going to start chapter 6 in geometry. And chapter 6 starts dealing with polygons. Today we're going to look at the polygon angle sum theorems. As we start looking at polygons, there's some very common ones that have special names that it would be important for you to know because a lot of times we just use the name of it. We don't say how many sides it has. So recognize if we say a triangle, that's going to have three sides. Okay, we should know that by now. But a quadrilateral has four sides, pentagon five, hexagon six. This one maybe is a new one for you, a heptagon, not quite as common, but you should have heard of an octagon. Another new one maybe nonagon, decagon. And then after about ten sides, we kind of get over it and quit naming every single one, and we just call it an n-gon. So like if it had 14 sides, we call it a 14-gon, or 20 sides is a 20-gon. So be looking for that notation. The first thing that we're going to look at is a theorem that we have. It states that the sum of the angles in any polygon will always equal 180 times n minus 2. n represents the number of sides. So if you had a pentagon, that'd be 5 sides. So you would take 5 minus 2, that'd be 3, times 180. There's a reason that that works. If you want to look in your textbook, you can kind of see where that is coming from always. But we're just going to jump in and use this formula. So let's just practice using it a couple times. You are going to definitely want your calculator handy. Maybe pause this video, go grab that calculator. You're going to need it. So this first one says, what is the sum of the angles in a heptagon? Well, first thing is we got to remember how many sides does a heptagon have. And it is 7, so I'm just going to do 180 times 7 minus 2. And 7 minus 2 is 5, so I would just type in my calculator, 5 times 180. You start to get familiar with some of these numbers, and you don't always have to enter them in your calculator. Love that mental math, if you can do that. But the sum of all the angles in a seven-sided polygon is going to end up 900. All right, so what that means is I can't even draw a seven-sided figure. It's going to look terrible, but <laughs> I usually do dot, dot, dot to show that continues. But what we're saying is that if you add this angle to this angle to this angle and all the interior angles, it's going to add up to 900. No matter what the shape, as long as it has seven sides, those angles add up to 900. Let's try a nonagon. If there were nine sides, not even going to try to draw that, that's going to be 180 times 9 minus 2. So in your calculator, you just type 180 times 7. And that ends up being 1260. The more sides you have, the wider open these angles get, and the more of them that there are. So that starts to increase as you have more sides. You do the 12 gun. How many... What's the sum of all the angles in a 12-gon? All right, this one you should have been able to do in your head, but sometimes we get stuck to using that calculator. This is just 12 times 2. That's 10. 10 times 180. That's 1,800. So definitely starting to get some large numbers with that. Now, a couple terms that we're going to come across that we need to recognize what this means as we move forward. If you have an equilateral, we've used that word. We use it with triangles, but it works for all polygons. Equilateral just means all the sides are going to be the same. So here is an example of an equilateral hexagon. All six sides are the same length. Then we have an example of something that's equiangular if all the angles are the same. But you can see that just because it's equiangular does not mean that the sides have to be the same. Obviously, these are not the same. However, if we can get a polygon that is both equiangular and equilateral, then we call it regular. And this is probably what you're used to seeing is just a regular po polygon where everything all matches up beautifully. All the sides are the same measurement, all the angles are. That's what regular means. So let's talk about a regular polygon. Specifically, if all the angles and sides are going to be the same, we could actually find the measure of each one of those interior angles. We're, what we're going to do is we're just going to use the sum formula right here. If I can find what they all add up to, and then just divide by how many there are. That would tell me what each of those interior angles is. So in this example, it says, what's the measure of each interior angle 
in a regular quadrilateral. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through the sum formula, the 180 times 4 minus 2. And I know that that's going to be a 2 times 180. That's going to end up a um, 360. But then that's my sum. I want to know what each angle is, so I'm going to come back and I'm going to divide it by 4. So this ends up being 360 divided by 4, which ends up equaling 90, which should make sense because a regular quadrilateral, a four-sided figure that has all sides the same and all angles the same is really just a square. And so a regular quadrilateral is a square, and we should know that the angles add up to 90. Or, I'm sorry, they don't add up. They each individually are 90. Okay, let's try one that maybe I'm not going to draw out and it's not going to make sense. We're just going to plug it along in the formula. It says, what's the measure of each interior angle in a regular decagon? Well, first thing I'm going to do is find the sum. That's the 180. And then I'm going to do 10 minus 2. So in my calculator, I'm going to type that in. But remember that that's going to give me the sum. So I'm going to have to come back and divide by how many of those angles there are. In the decagon, there were 10. So let's see what that gets us. If I take my 180 and multiply it by 8, that's 1440. But then I have to divide it by 10. So that means each of those angles in that polygon, in a, specifically in a decagon, and again, remember a decagon has 10 sides. It's something like this. And I'm going to do dot, dot, dot. But each one of these angles is 144 degrees in that regular decagon. All right, let's try using that. Um, this is a polygon here. It is not regular, but still that angle sum, the angles should add up to the same thing. So let's see how many sides we have. We've got um, one, two, three, four, five sides. This is a pentagon. So I'm going to go use my angle sum formula for a pentagon, and that's a 180 times 5 minus 2. So that means 180 times... 3, which gets me 540. That's what all the angles are supposed to add up to. Well, they want me to find this angle right here. All I'm going to do is take 540 and subtract all those other angles, and that's going to leave me with angle Y. So in my calculator, I'm just going to do 540 minus 150 minus 120 minus 90 minus 110. And that ends up with the measure of angle Y equaling 70 degrees. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about the exterior angles. You can draw exterior angles there on the outside of your polygon by just extending the sides of your polygon. So if you look at this example here, what we've done is we've taken this leg right here and we've just extended it past the edge of the triangle. And same thing here, just extend this on past. Now to draw all the exterior angles like I've done here, you kind of have to wrap yourself around that triangle in the same direction. So here I'm going around kind of counterclockwise, extending every direction. And what happens is that these interior angles that this triangle happens to have, when you draw in an exterior angle, it's just a linear pair. So I've gone ahead and figured out, okay, well, if this one's 100, this has to be 80. Just doing supplementary there. If this is 50, then this one has to be 130. And if this one's 30, that's 150. Now what I want to look at, though, is once those exterior angles are drawn and we've figured out what their measurements are, let's find what their sum is. So if I do all three of those angles, those exterior angles, and add them up, it ends up getting me 360. Okay, let's look over here at this quadrilateral. Same deal, I've drawn in all of the exterior angles by going around and extending each side, extending those. Already did the supplementary thing, have the measurements, put them down here, we want to add those up. So if you type this in your calculator, 115 plus 75 plus the 99 plus 71, it actually ends up equaling 360 again. 
And that's actually always the case, always. It, it can be a triangle, it can be a quadrilateral, it might be a heptagon, whatever it is, the exterior angles will always add up to this 360 every time. So we have ourselves a little theorem. The sum of the exterior angles in any polygon is always going to equal 360. So let's answer a couple questions. What is the sum of the exterior angles in a 15-gon? Okay, well, remember, doesn't matter. Sum of the exterior angles, always 360. Always. Let's try something a little trickier. What is the measure of just one exterior angle in a regular hexagon? Now, if I'm looking for one angle, it's always going to have to be in a regular hexagon because that's why I'm going to divide it by how many there are. So if I look at this and I say, okay, the measure of just one exterior angle. Well, let's start with the sum. What is the sum of the exterior angles? Always 360. But if I want to know what just one of them is, then I have to divide by how many of them are. And in a hexagon, there are six. So I would take 360, divide by six, and that means each of the exterior angles would have to be 60 degrees. Okay, let's try using some of that knowledge again. Here we have, in this first picture, we have the exterior angle is 110. All right, I'm looking for Y and Z, it looks like here. The first thing I think I would do is I'd go ahead and say, well, these are a linear pair right here. 110 and 7, I mean, and Z, those are a linear pair. So if I subtract 110 from 180, I'm going to get 70. So I know then that Z in this example is going to be 70 degrees. Okay, got it. Now I'm looking for Y. And this just looks like a generic quadrilateral. It's not a regular quadrilateral. So not obviously all the angles are going to be the same, because I already see that several of them are different. But their sum should still add up to this, using our sum formula of the interior angles. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, all right, it's going to be 180 times 4 minus 2. Okay, that's 180 times 2, so that's 360. I need the sum of these angles to be 360. So that means in my calculator then, I'm going to take my 360, and I'm going to subtract out all the ones I know. 360, I'm going to subtract the 70 that I just found angle, or that Z to equal. I'm going to subtract 87 and subtract 100. That leaves me with a 103. So y is going to equal 103 degrees. Easy enough? Hopefully so. All right, let's try something that has a little bit of algebra in it. All right, we have lots and lots of unknowns here. I think what I'm going to have to do is looking at what I have I don't, like they hardly, they haven't given me straight up any angle at all, but what they did give me was all three of these exterior angles. If you look at this, it has a Z plus 10, and this exterior angle is Z minus 13, and this exterior angle is just Z. All the angles have a Z in them. And I know that the, ang the exterior angles here should always add up to 360. So I'm going to set up a little equation here. Z, I'm going to add these three exterior angles, plus Z plus 10, plus Z minus 13, should all add up to 360 degrees. Let's do some algebra. I'm going to get 3Z. I got a plus 10 and a minus 13. I'm going to add 3 to the other side. And then I'm going to divide by 3. So Z would be 121. Okay. So I've got my Z solved for. But once I know that, I could actually then go ahead and fill in what all of these exterior angles are. So this exterior angle is 121. This one over here on the left is a 121 minus 13 which is a 108, so this angle is 108. And then this one down here in the corner is a 121 plus 10, so that one's 131. How do you suppose I'm going to find my x, y, and w? Okay. 
not using my new formulas, but really remember that these are all just linear pairs. So if I know the exterior angle is 108, I can subtract it from 180 to get W. Over here I can subtract this from 180 to get X. So let's start doing that. So 180 minus the 108 gets me 72. Okay, so I guess I'm just going to write it over here. W is equal to 72. Let's figure out what Z is. Let's take 180. I'm not, not Z, sorry. Um, we already know Z. Let's go do X. I'm going to do 180 minus the 121. And that's a 59 degree angle there. And then Y, I'm going to do a 180 minus the 131. And that's 49. So just working your way around the triangle, finding all the different parts. Using what we've known in the past, but also this new thing where, about the exterior angles and the interior angles. All right, so here's just a quick summary slide, just so you remember, we have enough formulas that we have to keep track of. I'm trying to limit how many formulas you have to know, but here's some that you got to know. you got to know that the sum of the interior angles is always that 180 times n minus 2. That's always the sum. And then if you can just use common sense that say, well, if I want to know just one of them, then I'm just going to divide by how many there are. And then you're, it's like one less that you, new formula you're trying to keep track of. Now that's the sum of the interior. The sum of the exterior always equals 360. It's not even a formula. It's just a number. The sum of the exterior, 360. If you want to know just what one exterior angle is, then you have to divide it by how many angles there are. And again, that's only going to work, this and this are only going to work if you have a regular polygon where all of the angles are the same. So we're going to do a little bit harder problems then, because this time what I'm looking for is how many sides the polygon has. So I don't know that n value, I don't know how many sides there are. So we're going to kind of maybe do some algebra, something to, to work through to solve for the n. If the sum of the interior angles is 540, how many sides would there be? Well, this is my formula here. I've got 180 times n minus 2. I don't know what n minus 2 is because I don't know n. I don't know the number of sides. But I know that this sum is going to end up equaling 540. Ooh, totally out of space there, sorry. Equal 540. And now I'm just going to solve this equation for n. I'm going to distribute my 180. I'm going to add 360 to the other side. So 540 plus 360 is 900. So that's 180n equals 900. Divide both sides by 180. And then, let me clean that up. N is going to equal 5. Oh, we have ourselves a pentagon. That's a five-sided figure. So that's how many sides are in the figure. Number two, let's try it again. If the measure of one interior angle in a regular polygon is 135, we want to know how many sides there are. All right, so this is one angle is 135. Not the sum, but one angle. Okay, that's a little bit trickier. I'm going to start off, I'm going to do my formula. The sum of the interior angles is this right here. And if I want to know just one of them, then I'm going to divide by how many angles there are. So I'm going to divide it by n. That right there should end up equaling 135. A little messier problem to solve. I'm going to have to get rid of this fraction. So the very first thing I want to do is multiply both sides by n. And then that's going to cross off. As I do that, I'm also going to distribute in my numerator because I know I'm going to run out of space on this one. I didn't give myself enough room. 180n minus 360 distributed that equals 135n. Now I need to get my n's together, so I'm going to subtract the 180n over here to the other side. And then I'm left with... Messy, messy, sorry. 
Okay, I'm going to be left with a negative 360 equals, and 135 minus 180 is actually a negative 45 in. Divide both sides by negative 45. And my n ends up equaling 8. All right, I have an 8-sided figure. That's what that is. An octagon has an interior angle of 135. Okay, make sure you get these put in your notes because these are pretty common types of problems, but there's quite a few steps there in solving that equation. Make sure you're comfortable with that. All right, last one, last slide. It says, if the measure of one exterior angle in a regular polygon is 36. Okay, again, looking for how many sides. The measure of one exterior angle is 36. Well, I know the sum of the exterior angles is always 36, or I'm sorry, is always 360. If I want just one of them, then I have to divide by how many sides there are. Ooh, I don't know how many sides there are, so I'm just going to divide by n. That's supposed to equal 36. I bet you you could figure out n just in your head right there. But if you can't, let's do some algebra. I'm going to multiply both sides by n to get rid of the fraction. I'm going to have 360 equals 36n. Divide both sides by 36. N is 10. I have a decagon. In a decagon, one exterior angle is going to be 36 degrees. All right, let's look at this fourth problem. It says, if the measure of one exterior angle in a regular polygon is 18, then find the measure of the interior angle and the number of sides. All right, this looks very similar to the one I just did. If the measure, because I'm, if the measure of one exterior angle, measure of one exterior angle is 36. This time I'm doing the same thing, only it's an 18. So 360 divided by the n is going to equal 18. Now I'm actually doing the find the number of sides here. That's what I'm doing. I kind of jumped ahead. I'll go back to that other part here in a second. This just jumped out to me that it was similar to the last problem. So I'm going to have 360 equals 18n because I multiplied both sides by that n. And then I'm going to divide by 18. So 360 divided by the 18 gets me 20. OK, so n is 20. I have 20 sides on my polygon. Let's do the other part of this. It says find the measure of the interior angle. OK, I'm not going to get fancy with my formulas. I just want you to kind of make sure this makes sense in your head. I have some sort of a polygon. Well, I actually know now it's a 20-sided polygon. So I'm just going to go dot, 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 because I'm not going to draw that. But here's my 20-sided polygon. And what I just found was that this exterior angle, when I extend this, this exterior angle they told me was 18. And what I want to find is this interior angle. Well, remember, what's the relationship there between interior and exterior angles? Well, they're a linear pair. They're supplementary. If I just take 180 and subtract 18, then I'm going to know what that interior angle is. And I have the interior angle equal to 162 if I subtract that from 180. So that's the other part of that problem. All right, that's all I have for you. Go ahead and you can start working on your homework. Good luck.